I'd like to introduce Dimitri Trofinov, who's the team. Trofimov. Trofimov. And Dimitri Trofimov, who's the team lead and a developer on the PyCharm team, and is going to talk about profiling. Thank you. Hi. You are brave people who are interested in profiling and don't afraid of talks uh, marked as advanced. Actually, when I saw this talk uh, in schedule marked as advanced, I was scared a bit uh, myself. <laughs> it, it won't be that hard, I hope. So, uh, first, uh, I briefly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Dmitry Trofimov. Uh, I work for JetBrains. I'm team lead and developer for, uh, of PyCharm IDE. My talk uh, won't be about PyCharm directly but I will use this debugger as a case study for profiling and optimization. Uh, if you want to discuss anything about PyCharm, just come to uh, JetBrains booth in the expo hall uh, to talk with the team. Uh, being involved in the development of PyCharm, I have done a lot of different things, but the runtime aspects of uh, Python, like debugging, profiling, and execution, interested me more. Today I want to show you how usage of statistical profiler uh, can help to optimize program. And this program, as I've, been said, as I've said already, will be a Python debugger. I will try to stay in a high level using the debugger as an example and touch its details only if necessary. So well, let's begin. Um, the best theory is inspired by practice. The best practice is inspired by theory, said Donald Knuth. I like this saying. What I'm going to show today is inspired by practice. It was a real problem and to some extent still is. And the approach, the solution to it, uh, uh, that I will show later, uh, it was also real. Uh, it was actually done at some moment. And if you're interested in it, you can lay it, uh, look into the code. Um, but also very interesting is that when preparing for this talk, I tried to rationalize things uh, and to look at the process uh, which happened in the past from a bit more theoretical perspective. As if I did that again, but more uh, in the right way. And actually that opened uh, some knowledge for me and gave me some ideas that I will implement in future. And I hope that uh, you find something interesting in this talk too. So, uh, as it happens uh, quite often in our software development work, uh, we start with a issue ticket in the bug tracker. So, the issue uh, says debugger uh, gets really slowed down and it provides uh, a code sample. And uh, so, uh, we see clearly that this issue is about Python debugger in PyCharm. PyCharm debugger, that's uh, some uh, part of the PyCharm that is written in Python. That's the same uh, debugger that is used in PyDef AD. That's an open source project that is maintained by Fabio Zadrozny, the author of the PyDef. And uh, also it's maintained by PyCharm team. Um, to understand better how the debugger works, I recommend to listen to uh, the recording of my talk at EuroPython 2014. This is called Python Debugger Uncovered. But now I will remind some basic concepts. PyCharm debugger consists of two parts. The part on the IDE side, or the visual part, is responsible uh, for the interaction with uh, the user. It communicates with the second part that lives in the Python process. This second part, the Python part, receives breakpoints and comments via socket connection and sends back uh, some data if needed. And the data can be the values of uh, variables and stack traces and notifications about breakpoints hit. Um, so uh, that's a Python, a part of the Python application with some threads, I/O, and separate event loop, and it's actually it's always running in the background of the process, and that all can lead to some uh, performance overhead. And the core of the Python debugger is the trace function. That is actually the window. Uh, through which the debugger looks to the user code and sees what's happening there. Python uh, provides an API for tra tracing the code. 
Uh, it is a function called set trace. It gets a trace, a trace function as an argument. Uh, then that trace function is executed on every event that happens with the user program. An event like uh, line execution or function call or exception or return from the function. There are a lot of checks that trace function performs. For example, it checks whether there is a breakpoint for a given line, and if there is, it generates a suspend event. So I think you've got an idea how a uh, debugger looks like. There are some threads doing communication with the ID in the background, and there is a th trace function that gets events about executed lines. So let's go back to the issue ticket. Uh, when the code is executed normally, it runs for three seconds. In the debug mode with a breakpoint, it executes for 12 seconds. But uh, in the debug mode with breakpoint, it executes for 18 minutes. It's very long. And um, um, And uh, let's reproduce this issue, whether it actually, uh, actually exists. So we open PyCharm, and we ha have this code. And actually, not to wait 18 minutes, we will uh, reduce the, the code snippet. Actually, about this code snippet, it's, it's just, OK, let's kill this one. Um, actually, this, that is a simple function. Uh, with, with one uh, iteration through the range, uh, the only uh, uh, interesting thing is that the range is quite, quite big, and we have here an increment. So let's re reproduce this issue. We just uh, run it. It was fast. Then we debug it. It was a bit slow, but also fast. And then we place a breakpoint, and we then it works, yes. <laughs> so the issue exists. Um, let's analyze this issue. So uh, we have here three different cases. Normal run, debug without breakpoints, and debug with a breakpoint. And actually, as we can place a breakpoint in at diff different lines, um, there are uh, three more cases. So it's debug with a breakpoint in the function, debug with a breakpoint in, in the same file, but not in that uh, particular function, and debug uh, pl plus a breakpoint in some other file. But uh, testing shows that um, the last case actually behaves the same as debug without breakpoints at all. It, it, breakpoint is some other file, doesn't affect performance at all. So we won't. Uh, look at that case. So basically we have four different cases. So uh, for our four cases, uh, we have two cases with breakpoint in the function and breakpoint in the file. Uh, the debugger works slow. Uh, William Edwards Deming, famous engineer, statistician, and management consultant said, you can't improve what you can't measure. So before we do anything else, profiling or optimization, we should be able to measure the performance of the thing we want to make faster. Um, in our case, uh, this, the core of the sample code is an iteration. Uh, so we use model time uh, to write how many seconds it took for the iteration to complete. So that will be our simple measurement. And after we apply this measurement to our cases, we see that uh, the two cases with uh, debug with the breakpoints actually work um, 100 times slower than normal run. Which is a, a bit sad, but uh, who knows? Maybe in this particular case, with this example, it's, it's not possible to make any better. So we need to compare this with something, with some program which does the same thing and have more or less the same functionality. And uh, we choose PDB for that. Although it is less functional than PyCharm debugger, 
but it is sufficient for our comparison. You can place a breakpoint and PDB will stop at it. It is also written in Python, so it is in the same class. It wouldn't make any sense to compare with something written in C because it's different, has different application. Um, so, and PDB is in standard library, and uh, so it sounds natural to take it as a performance standard. And now we can make a benchmarking. After we took PDB as a standard, we can apply the same measurement to it, and then we can compare results with our debugger, which now will become a baseline in terms of benchmarking. And uh, what we see is that PDB being a bit faster still suffers from the same problem. In the cases uh, where breakpoint point is set, um, it has, um, uh, the performance drops down dramatically. But still, it is a bit faster. It takes five seconds instead of nine. So uh, we can try to reach its performance. And uh, the first thing we need to do to make the code faster is to find a bottleneck. It doesn't make sense at all to optimize parts of the code that doesn't influence the overall performance. And the part that influences uh, the overall performance the most called a bottleneck. So let's find it. And the best way to do the, that is profiling. Profiling is the way to look at your code from the different perspective, to find out what calls what and how long did it take for that to run. Profile is a set of statistics that describes how often and how long uh, various parts of your program executed. A tool that can generate such statistics for the given program is called Profiler. Let's use a Python profiler, but first we need to choose one. So let's learn about Python profilers available. If you are looking for a Python profiler, you will find several of them. The most obvious choices are C profiler, YAPI, and Line profiler. C profile is a part of the Python standard library. It is written in C. Python documentation says about it, C profile is recommended for most users. It's an ex C extension with reasonable overhead that makes it suitable for profiling long running programs. YAPI profiler is almost the same as C profile, but in addition, it able to profile separate threads. Line profiler is very different from two previous profilers. It provides statistics not about functions that are executed, but about lines inside the functions. Also uh, written in C, it provides a rather high overhead because it traces every line. SC profile is a default choice, and we don't need the features of YAPI and line profiler, at least yet. Let's use C profile. And we do that in PyCharm. Uh, for that case, we will have a bit, uh, our sample code will be changed a bit because we need here to uh, use at the same time debugging and profiling. So we will sub set up debugger from the source code and uh, we'll put place breakpoint here. And uh, what we do now is we profile it and we continue. So the task is started, we wait until it finishes. So, and after that finishes, we see, no, sorry, <laughs> that is not what I wanted to show. Let's do that one more time. We continue. task started and we wait until it finishes. Yes. And we look at the call graph. We see here, we see here a lot of, we see here a lot of uh, calls, but actually if we look closer, we'll see that all of them actually take uh, zero milliseconds. That, that calls, that are internal calls of debugger. And uh, the calls that took the most of the time actually there are two of them, are user code. That's uh, our function and the main work. So basically what we are seeing here is that um, 
C profile didn't show us any useful information. Is our debugger unprofilable? Or should we use Yappy or Line Profiler then? Actually, if we do, we'll see that they don't show anything neither. And so, why is that so? Why is it so? It doesn't work. Okay. Um, to answer this question, we need to learn a bit about how C profile, uh, Yappy, and Line profile profiler work. C profile provides deterministic profiling of Python programs. What does deterministic profiling mean? There are actually two major types of profilers, tracing profilers and as, or deterministic profilers and sampling profilers, also called statistical profilers. Tracing profilers, um, they trace uh, the events of the running program. An event can be a function call or execution of a line. Uh, that is the same as we had with the trace function in our debugger. The disadvantage of such profilers is that as they trace all the events, they add significant overhead to, to the execution. As for the debugging, Python provides an API for the profiling. The function responsible for that is called set profile. Set profile. It is almost the same as set trace, with the only difference that the function that we pass, the profile function, is called, isn't called for every line, it's called only for function calls. All these profiles use a set profile or set trace function to set up the profiling. Um, and that's why they profile on the user code. And our debugger, which also uses a set trace, turns out to be out of the scope of set profile. So all these profilers aren't applicable in our case. So, is our debugger unprofilable? Actually, there, are, there is another type of uh, profilers. It's called uh, sampler or statistical profilers. Uh, such profilers operate by sampling. A sampling profiler captures the target performance call stack at regular intervals. Sampling profilers are typically less specific and have uh, um, and, and sometimes not very accurate, but they allow to run the program at, at, its, all, at its full speed. Uh, so they have less overhead, which in some cases make them actually uh, much more accurate than tracing profilers. Finding a statistical profiler for Python is not that easy as a tracing profiler, as there is no obvious choice. But if we search enough time, we'll find several statistical profi Python profilers as well. That are StatProf, Plop, Intel VTune Amplifier, and VMProf. Let's have a closer look at them to choose the one that we will use to profile uh, our debugger. StatProf is a sampling profiler written in pure Python. It's open source. It doesn't work, unfortunately, on Windows, only on Mac and Linux. It works, uh, but it's quite minimal and the last time it was updated was long ago. Blob, or Python Low Overhead Profiler, is written in pure Python. So actually, it's funny, but it's, it's, not, that overhead, uh, it's not that low overhead as it could be. And it doesn't work on Windows neither, and it, its main page on GitHub says that uh, it's a work in progress and it's pretty rough uh, around the ages. So, not, not our choice. Um, Intel VTune Amplifier, it's, it is very accurate, has low overhead, but it is proprietary and not open source. You need to buy a license to use it, which may be not the worst thing, but it isn't suitable in my case, as it doesn't work on Mac OS X. And VMProf, VMProf is a lightweight statistical profiler that works for Python 2.7, Python 3, and even PyPy. This profiler was uh, developed by PyPy team and presented a year ago at EuroPython 2015. Uh, and since that has been developed and actively, actively and reached uh, its stable state. Um, it is written in C, so it has a really low overhead. It's open source and free. And actually, uh, it's very great it's open source because uh, it's, it allowed me, for example, to add line profiling feature to it uh, during preparation for this talk a week ago, which 
would be impossible if, if it weren't open source. So it seems that it's a profiler of our choice. Let's try to use uh, VMProf to profile, uh, profile our debugger. And we do that again uh, in PyCharm. So uh, we'll use another run configuration for that, the same source code. And we press profile button, and we continue. We wait until the main task, task finishes. Yes, and after it finished, we see that we have here a call tree. Actually, that is a nice, very nice feature of uh, sampling profile that it provides you uh, with a call tree where you can see actually how your program was executed with, a, with timings. And uh, we see here that the most of the time was taken by, by our trace function, that is the trace function of our debugger. So that was the, the, that is the bottleneck. Our trace function self is a bottleneck. Not everything else, not threads, not IO, it's a trace function. So we found bottleneck. What should we do next? To make our program faster, we need to optimize it. And uh, optimization can occur at a number of levels. Typically, the higher levels have greater impact. The optimization can proceed via refinement from higher to lower. At the highest level, the design may be optimized to make best use of the available resources and expected use. Uh, the architectural design of the system highly affects its performance. But in our case, we're a bit limited with our design decisions as we need to comply uh, the set trace API contract. So this optimization level isn't available for us. Given an overall design, a good choice of efficient algorithms and data structures and efficient implementations of these algorithms and data structures come, come next. Let's see whether we can make an algorithmic optimization. Uh, to find uh, the way to optimize our debugger algorithmically, let's ask ourselves a question. Why does debug without breakpoints work so much faster than uh, with breakpoints in the executed file? If we look into the code, we will find out that in case there is no breakpoints in the current file, the trace function returns none, while if there are any, it returns itself. So in the middle of this function, we get the breakpoint of the file, and if there, there is none, then we just return none. And so if we refer to the documentation again, we see in the last sentence that uh, local uh, trace function should return a reference to itself or another function for further trace in that scope or none to turn off trace in that scope. So actually, if we don't have uh, breakpoints for the file, we turn off the tracing for the scope altogether. That's why it works very fast. And uh, why don't we do the same for, but for functions, not for file? So we can uh, add a little change we store the name of the function where the breakpoint is placed. And then, if we don't have breakpoints for a function, there is no need to trace it. We just return none. If we measure the performance of this optimization, we see that uh, our function started to work 110 milliseconds instead of 9 seconds, which is a big deal. Beyond uh, general algorithms and their implementation, concrete source code cho level choices can make significant difference. So um, our next uh, optimization will be on the source level. But to make uh, such an optimization effectively, we need to go to the source li lines level. For, the, for that, line, line profiling can be useful. But line profiler won't help us in the, that case, as it is implemented by trace function. Instead, we use a special mode of VMProf profiler, which was introduced there recently, 
and it enables capturing uh, line statistic from stack traces. Let's use it and see how it works. We will again run it in PyCharm. We'll use another run configuration for that with the uh, LAN profiling mode enabled. And we use the same source. And we press profile button. And we continue. So after it finishes, we see our trace dispatch function. And now what we can do is go to source. And in the source, we see uh, a heat map, which sh shows us which line took the most of the time. And it's very strange, but the most of the time was taken by this particular line. It was 20% and uh, 330 hits from nearly uh, one, one and a half thousand. Uh, actually, what, what that line does is uh, that um, it checks whether we need to trace this particular thread or not. And that's it. So, and if we see that uh, those two lines in the beginning, they are not related at all to this line. So what we can do is to move this line in the beginning of this function. Let's do that. So we'll just put it here. And also, if I think, if I'm thinking about how to optimize this source, we can remember that get getEtter is not the optimal way to check whether um, an object has uh, an attribute, because get getUtter makes a lot, a lot different things. So what we can, how we can rewrite this is we can write it, oh, no. It's not very convenient to write it. Okay, I won't type because my setup doesn't allow me to do. So we rewrite it this way. So we just check whether this attribute which is used as a, just as a mark is in the dict of the object. And after we check the performance of uh, this, we'll see that it, this source optimization actually gave us, us one second. There are several low-level optimizations which aren't available for Python. Being an interpreter, Python doesn't have build, compiled, and assembly phases. Runtime optimization is, is possible in Python uh, because runtime optimization is, for example, uh, JIT, that's just in time optimization, but it's available now only for PyPy uh, and not for Cyton. So, uh, what to do? Uh, did the optimization reach its limit? Uh, actually, if all high level optimizations are already done and Python doesn't permit us to go deeper, we need to go beyond Python. Maybe we should rewrite everything in C to improve the performance. But in that case, we will lose the compatibility with Python implementations other than C Python. For example, Jython, Iron Python, and PyPy uh, would become incompatible. And um, having two implementations of the debugger, um, one in Python and one in C, uh, will make uh, adding new features a lot more harder. What if we could just leave our Python code as it is, but still optimize it a bit? Uh, on lower level. So, solution exists, and it's called Cython. Cython is a static compiler for Python, which gives the combined power of Python and C. That is an example of program written in Cython. Know that it looks exactly like normal Python code, except that declaration of variables in the second and third line, these declarations have um, type information, which allows Cython compiler to generate more efficient code. So this basically provides us with another level of possible optimization, uh, inaccessible before, namely compile optimization. Let's add Cython type information to our trace function implementation. So, after we compile our trace function with Cython, 
as a native extension and measure its performance, we will learn that, it's, that it made our debugger more than twice as fast, four seconds instead of nine. So now we can compare our three optimizations combined with the baseline, our initial version of debugger, and with the PDB, our goal. And we see that we have reached uh, the goal and actually done even better. Yay, happiness. But to better our happiness, I will say that after we compiled our debugger with Cython, it became a native code which can be profiled with VMProf well anymore. So it is unprofilable again, ironically. But there are still ways to profile it which will leave out of the scope of this talk today. And uh, the issue, we managed to double the performance for the sample code. Uh, from the issue ticket, um, and we made it uh, better than PDB, but still in this particular case it works slower than run, and maybe it is possible to make it even, to work even more faster given the constraints of the uh, set trace API and so on, but still maybe there are ways to optimize it. So we'll leave that issue open for a while. Conclusion, use profilers to find bottlenecks in your code. There are different profilers, each has own advantage. Learn about them. Start to optimize things from the higher level to lower. And uh, to optimize Python on a lower level, use Cython. So that's all for today. Thank you for listening. That are links for the improv profiler and debugger if you are interested, you can look into the code. Actually, this uh, feature of line profiling was added to VMProf uh, recently, uh, mm, so it's not available in PyCharm yet, uh, but it will be available uh, via a plugin. I will publish it um, may on this week, I hope. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dimitri, for this um, great talk. So the floor is open for questions. May I ask you to wait for us to like give you the microphone, uh, just because we are recording everything. Thanks. Hi there. My Hi. biggest issue is memory profile. What can you help me with that? Um, actually, um, in this particular case, memory profiling wasn't an issue. Uh, if you're interested in memory profile, I can recommend to look at the VMProf because it supports memory profiling. The only thing it doesn't support yet is uh, profiling of the native memory allocations. But that's actually a, quite a hard problem in Python. So if you have a pure Python code, memory, uh, VMProf can profile your memory. And actually, there in, in Python 3.5, there is an API for memory profiling. I don't remember how it's called. It's, I think it's called memory profiling. So you can look at it also. The questions? Uh, hi, I'm Jakub Kowalski, and I uh, wanted to uh, ask uh, uh, maybe a uh, uh, newbie question, but uh, 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 isn't uh, writing uh, uh, the uh, code in uh, uh, Cython uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, also uh, uh, rendering uh, it incompatible with uh, other uh, Python implementations? Yes, uh, that's a great question, by the way. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, if you just add a CDF uh, into the, your Python source, uh, it won't be compatible anymore. But uh, what you can do, and uh, uh, what we did in PyCharm debugger, is uh, we had uh, these uh, site and optimizations opt uh, optional. So the only change that you need to make in your Python source to be it uh, Cython co compilable is to add these CDEF uh, definitions in the beginning. So we used a little template uh, language. Uh, w uh, so in our source, these CDEF uh, uh, definitions are commented out. 
So the source uh, is running as a normal Python source. But to build Python uh, Cython extension, we uncommend this, these lines and the source became uh, Cython compilable. I can show you, actually, it's better to see than to, um, to say. So here we have, we have, uh, um, like this is a custom template, small language, and it says, if it is Cython, then we have uh, this header. If it's not Cython, then it's normal Python. So actually, this source works for all Python uh, implementations, and if we need to compile that, we do it for, with a setup.py where we uncommand this. If in case if it is Cython. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, if not, please join me in thanking Dimitri again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.